how much damage can your brain take and you still be able to function normally? Is any damage deadly? Or can you lose half your brain and still survive? Or perhaps live a normal life? In this episode of Psych Boost, Brain Plasticity and Functional Recovery of the Brain. Firstly, let's define the term plasticity. This means that due to changes in the environment, the brain adapts, making changes to both its function and its structure. These changes in the environment could be simply the process of needing to learn a new skill, adapting to the developmental needs of growing from a baby into a child and then into an adult. Or it could be a sudden traumatic event, resulting in physical damage and the indirect effects of brain damage such as brain swelling or hemorrhage following trauma that resulted in a stroke. These direct and indirect factors can cause neuronal cell death, with the brain needing to change significantly and relatively quickly to compensate for the areas that are permanently damaged. Functional recovery after brain damage involves healthy areas of the brain compensating for areas that have been lost or damaged. This is called functional reorganization, functions that were performed by the lost areas and now performed by other healthy areas. So how does plasticity actually work? Well, as discussed in a previous video, the brain is constructed of neurons connected by synapses. Information travels between neurons. New information will result in the formation of new neuronal pathways and repeated use of these pathways will result in the pathways becoming stronger. But not using these pathways will result in these connections becoming weaker and ultimately removed, a process called synaptic pruning. This process is highly active in the brains of newborns and children. In fact, you have more connections as an infant than you'll ever have at any other time of your life. But as you develop, many of these synaptic connections are pruned, making fewer but stronger connections. As well as losing old connections, new connections can form, with neuronal cell bodies even forming new axons in a process called axonal sprouting, or even neural regeneration, the growth of new neurons and or connections to compensate for damaged areas. This creation of many new connections can result in structural changes to the brain that can be seen under the microscope. Another response to the loss of axons in a pathway is to make the remaining axons in the pathway more sensitive. This is called denervation supersensitivity. And while allowing the individual to continue functioning, it can lead to chronic sensitivity to pain. There are factors, however, that make functional recovery more or less likely. Age is key, with younger patients far more likely to recover function after brain damage. Children are by far the most resilient and able to recover from significant damage. But even when just looking at adults, younger adults are more able to recover than older adults. Gender is a factor, with women seemingly being able to recover from brain trauma more easily than men. Also, access to rehabilitative therapy can be important, with recovery more likely if focused effort is put into, say, moving a limb that's partially paralysed or attempting basic speech if they've got an aphasia. Constraint-induced therapy involves stopping the patient from using coping strategies. Strategies like using the other arm for tasks or using body language to communicate and actually consciously working on their loss function. This results in neural reorganization, the transfer of functions to undamaged areas of the brain. Research evaluation for plasticity. A study that's somewhat well known is a piece of research by Maguire in 2000. This was done on London taxi drivers. As you may know, London taxi drivers need to complete a test called the knowledge, memorising over 100,000 landmarks and the routes between them. It takes about two years of difficult mental work to complete this. In Maguire's study, a match pair design was used. 16 male taxi drivers and a control group both had a structural MRI scan and the scans compared. In these scans, the researchers found that the taxi drivers had a significant difference in an area of the brain called the posterior hippocampus, showing an increased volume of grey matter in that area. This suggests brain plasticity, as the results indicate that the physical structure of the taxi driver's brains had changed in its physical structure as a response to the intense demands placed on it in that memorization task. 
Research Evaluation Functional Recovery After Trauma. A case study by Denelli in 2013 shows just how resilient the brain can be to extreme damage. As an infant, EB had a massive tumour in his left hemisphere. At the age of two, his doctors decided to perform a hemispherectomy. This is removal of one entire side of the brain, in this case the left. This is a side of the brain that includes the language centres of Broca and Wernicke's areas in 95% of right-handed people like EB. So what happened to EB's speech after the surgery? Well, EB had lost all language ability. However, over the following two years, he almost fully recovered his ability to talk. Over the next few years, EB developed normally, with some dyslexia-like symptoms and slight speech difficulties. fMRI brain scans as a teenager showed his remaining right hemisphere functioned like a typical left hemisphere. The researchers suggested that the right hemisphere was replicating a left-like neural blueprint. This case study suggests that even extreme trauma can be compensated for by the functional reorganization of other structures in the brain, especially if that trauma occurs early in life. General evaluations. Understanding how the brain can recover from trauma can help physiotherapists in helping their clients regain lost function, independence, and may even help the economy by returning people to work. Also, research on functional recovery can help us understand more clearly how different regions of the brain are specialised by measuring the location of damage and the lost functions. There also seem to be individual differences in who is more able to recover, with some people having greater cognitive reserve. A meta-analysis by Matthias in 2015 demonstrated that both IQ and educational background were positively correlated with positive outcomes after traumatic brain injury. And you can look at the article in the description below. Bonus fact. One of the most famous case studies in the psychological literature is of a man called Phineas P. Gage. This really demonstrates the resilience of the brain. Phineas was working on the American railway line in 1848. His job was to use a tamping iron, which is a long metal pole over one meter long and three centimeters thick. And he uses it to pack explosives into the ground. As you may expect, this is dangerous work. The explosive went off from a spark and the explosion shot the iron bar out of the hole like a bullet. Unfortunately for Phineas, his head was in the way and the pole shot right through his skull. So from under his open mouth, up through the left frontal lobe and then out of the skull, landing 25 meters away covered in blood and brain. Phineas, as you can imagine, fell over. But within a few minutes, he was able to talk and walk. When he got to the doctor, he vomited, and what the doctor described as a teacup of brain exited the top of his skull. His health deteriorated over the next few days, and he was in and out of a coma. But he just about survived, and was on his feet again after 24 days. Long term, physically, he recovered. Aside from some facial paralysis, mentally, he also recovered. Aside from some slight memory loss, and his friend said he developed a temper. But he lived for another 12 years after the accident. Phineas's well-documented experience still raises questions of our understanding of the brain and its resilience to damage. I hope you found this psych boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help psych boost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.